to, to know who you are. And as I said, as, as you agree, start by going to the authorities so that this kind of potential risk is, a, is alleviated in the first instance because really they should be issuing plates for you. We shouldn't yeah. have to be producing plates. I don't want to be producing plates. Mm-hmm. It's not my business to be producing plates. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, let the let 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 the the government should be doing its job and producing plates so that there is no conflict on the side of the road. Right? We shouldn't be having to produce plates. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for those points. They're, they are very important issues. I know. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, let me get back to some of the questions here. Um, let me have a look here. Uh, what have we got? Um, uh, do okay. Do I need any help with the uh, Ucadia sites? Uh, yes. <laughs> if you don't have any people with IT skills, one of the things that we definitely need to work on is the quality of the sites. And look, I, I mean this quite seriously. The whole point of this year into next year is that there is a transition where the communities are managing this material. I'm here to help. I'm here to finish material. But, it, but absolutely, um, with people with IT skills, would be absolutely welcome. And for those that have responded and nothing has happened yet, I'm sorry if we haven't got things off the ground. But if, if, you've, if you've contacted before or you've never contacted, please make contact because IT skills are absolutely um, wanted and needed. And what we need to do is build a community of people with those skills so that they can see the architectures of the sites and can start to take ownership of it as an open source structure. Um, Question. Frank, did you look into filling out the passport forms? My question from last week. Uh, Hi, Jen. I haven't. Um, there is a particular way to fill out the passport forms. The question is, is there a way to fill out a passport where we don't identify ourselves as a pauper or a peon? Uh, the answer is yes, there is, and we need to add that into the U of U. What I will do is I will get uh, make sure that we've got a section for the issue of passports, an example. We, we may not be able to produce the example, but certainly we can give feedback as to what we found out about passports on how to fill it out. It turns out to be as simple as making sure that we don't produce a ready residential address. When they talk about um, uh, where we are, our place, it's planet Earth. I'll, I'll, I'll fill it out. You'll see what it is. It's effectively negating the presumption that we are within their estate. Uh, so we'll get that up on your view. Thank you. Um, okay, let's have a look at the next question here. I see Connecticut's back up, so let me answer that question. And please, anyone, star eight, and feel free to come on, and I would love to hear from you. So I'll just unmute Connecticut. Hi, Connecticut. Hi. Hi again. Hi. Um, one more question. Last week you talked about... I forgot how you said it, but it was the R full stop with the monarchy. Yes, yes. How do we use this? Can I just sign everything with this R full stop? What exactly does that do? I mean, you talked briefly about it, but I would like to have more information on it. Okay. Um, The word family, you've heard obviously the word family before? Yes. Okay, the word family comes from the Latin word familiar. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the meaning of the word familiar in Latin means uh, a member of the household slaves. Oh, well, then I don't want to use that. Well, why does the monarchy use (laughs) it? Well, no, no, that's the the word family. So that that means applied to the word family name, yes? Okay. But uh, when you see the queen, you've heard of the queen, she's called... Uh, is she called Queen Elizabeth or Queen Windsor? I'm um, um, Queen Elizabeth, I believe. Queen Elizabeth, yeah? Yeah. So Elizabeth is her Christian name or her first name, yeah? Okay. All right, yes. But, but Windsor is her family name, okay? Okay. So, so what happens is 
our, our first name, our Christian name, Frank or Mary, John, whatever that is, does not of its own denote that we are a slave, does it? Correct. It's only when our first name is connected to our family name, is connected to a salutation that completes a statement that effectively is a statement like in English saying, I am a slave. Okay. And if it's an uppercase, it means I'm a corporation. <laughs> I'm a slave yeah. ship. All right. Yeah, yeah. So what, your, what, what the R full stop meant was uh, Frank or Francis R full stop is the form of signature of an executor having dominion uh-huh. of, over their own estate. Does that make sense? So you would have to obviously do all the paperwork to truly be the executor to actually be using that. And then afterwards, then you could use that to uh, show that you were not one of the slaves anymore. Oh, absolutely. But you, you, you heard what we're talking about and how to get that paperwork done, yeah? Could you tell me one more time? Yeah, that's right. I mean, first you need to have your will and testament yeah. recorded as a deed, executed as a deed. Okay, so you're not in a Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, then the next thing you want to do is you want to have your um, uh, some form of deed that references your will and testament. So the deed just makes clear that the general executor has been appointed. And the reason you want a deed is you don't want to, you don't want to be filing. And you, in fact, you, you, have, you have no reason to be filing your will and testament as evidence into a court. I mean, they have no right. That is a that is a special document. They have no right. So the deed becomes a way of referencing it without having to whip it out and referring to it. Yeah? I understand. And then the affidavit simply is, is, is a way of then referring to the deed every time you've got to put some paperwork into some kind of clerical office. Yeah? So how long does it take to get all this paperwork done and not reject it? Not long. Okay. That long. Okay. And as uh, for the deeds, you can use the ecclesiastical deeds, correct? Well, the ecclesiastical deed, what we want to do is, is the ecclesiastical deed has been used and, and many people put it in and it has, it has made a huge impact, albeit people may not see it for their own case. It, it has certainly given the system public notice. I, I don't want people to be continuing down the ecclesiastical deed role and for the system to be dishonouring their intent. What, what the feedback we've got is the system saying, we have this remedy over here for intent of your standing. We call it will and testament. You're calling it ecclesiastical deed poll. We call it will and testament. All right? They're splitting hairs. They're saying, if you want to call it ecclesiastical deed poll, we'll ignore it because it's a private document. But if it's a will and testament, we recognise will and testament. Okay, so either there is still some remedy in their system or they're completely pirates and bandits. I mean, <laughs> I think people in many respects feel that they've already become that anyway. But okay, if, that's the, if, if you're saying that you're, you're not recognising our standing because we're not using your magic abracadabra word, we'll, we'll use your word. We'll comply to that form and then you need to prove that you are still following your own law. Now, if you don't follow your own law, then we know for certain that it's all over, that we're really just dealing with the last days of, of pirates and, and thieves. That is why we're transitioning from the EDP process to the will and testament, not because the EDP is wrong, but because these people are saying, ah, we don't see intent because we consider form over substance. And right, they're just looking for any, hmm? Right, they're just they're just looking for any type of loophole not to Yeah, exactly. They're looking okay. for any loophole, any excuse not to do their job. Okay. Thank you. Does that answer your questions? Yes, it does. Very much so. Thank you. All right. Good on you. All right, good night. Bye. 
I'll take uh, this next call and I'll, I'll go through and see if there's any more questions in the chat. Uh, hello, Sterling. Can you hear us? Hey, Frank. This is Sterling. Hi. How are you going? Um, I have a question about different forms of courts. Um, there's quite a few listed in America, um, at least. There's all the ones that are referenced in some of the canons that you talk about, like Superior and all that kind of stuff. But um, which courts are the ones that we should be focusing on if we were to actually pursue, like, making them accountable for something that they they did wrong so that we don't just let them get away with it over and over? Like, if we wanted to so, do a lawsuit or, you know, just a little slap on the wrist or something like that. So what, what you're saying is um, you're in a position, say you're in a position where you don't have any pending legal matters, but what you want to do is go back once you've perfected your will and testament, perfected the deed, got it on the record, public notice, done all that. You want to go back and you want to effectively um, convene court to do a tracing and, and, and correct mistakes. Is that what you're saying? Sort of. For example, um, I spent a lot of time in court, about four years, fighting traffic issues with some of the UCC stuff and stuff like that. And yeah. um, it did manage to put quite a bit of um, negative things on my credit, which I don't really use credit for anything, but it would be nice if that didn't appear on there. So I was wondering if there was a way to kind of clear everything up and just kind of delete everything from... Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you can file a, a federal court... Um, motion. I mean, you can bring any any motion to a court to have it cleared up. <clears throat> and I would suggest to you that once you've uh, perfected your position as being the general executor of the estate, <clears throat> and you give them notice, then you give them two choices: either they administratively uh, clear it up under instruction, or you um, nominate a court date and you tell them that at that court date you will be appointing the judge as the trustee to clear it up, yeah? So, but uh, there's so many different kinds of court. Which court would you actually be doing it in? You said federal no, court. Okay. okay. Yes, you're correct. I mean, the, there are obviously different forms of court. The, I would say to you that the, the main divisions of court in their system, I mean, the courts, primarily that the main courts are the courts uh, at the lower courts are the guardian courts, magistrate. So they're the courts of the guardians. Then you have probate, which is your county, district, superior, supreme, federal. Then you have equity, of which there are very few. And then you have pure commercial, being amorty. Yeah? So they're okay. kind of generally speaking, and you've got family which is a, 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 a pure guardian court. So I would, um, I would suggest to you that you just be your, your, your standard garden variety federal court um, probate matter um, that you want to bring forward, isn't it? You want to be what? Federal court probate. Okay. Now, would you do that in the form of like a sworn affidavit or a special affidavit or just a regular written affidavit or... Well, I just call it an F. Uh, well, I mean, how, how do you, if you're if you're going to um, if you're going to start a matter in a federal federal court in the U.S., then uh, normally they would say that you do it by uh, putting in a claim. Yes. Okay. So the way you do it is uh, you would you want to give them notice. So you're, you're, you're identifying the federal court at this point because it has administrative skills to manage the matter administratively through the form of a notice. And I'd call it probably a, a notice um, followed by a claim that if the notice is not completed, then the claim will be lodged to have the matter um, scheduled for administration or notice and claim. I don't, I don't have the form yet for you because it's a good question. What you're asking is, how do I initiate a clear up of the past if I'm not presently in some controversy? 
So I'm yeah. thinking on my faith here. Give me a chance.